Cotton clouds and misty valley mist Far and wide, far and wide I'm searching far and wide I will get you, I'll catch you You may me trap you Searching far and wide for you I'm searching for salvation way out here in the mountains. I find it every once in a while. But no matter where you run to, your fear can still creep into your blood and brains and wipe away your smile. Far and wide, far and wide. I'm searching far and wide. Yes, I will get you, I'll catch you. Back. You mainly trap you, searching for and wide for you. Mm -hmm. I'm pining for Paul Bunyan in that Minnesota cabin. I'm one of those 10,000 lakes. They say time travels impossible. My head's full of pipe dreams. Willing to do what it takes. Far and wide, far and wide. I'm searching far and wide. Yes, I will get you, I'll catch you. I humanely trap you. Searching far and wide. Thank you. That song is called Far and Wide. And I've got one more for you here. This song is called Singing for Singing's Sake. This is off my latest album. summer slips out, I can smell all the moans, and the harvest soon. All the peppers and beans in the garden, get clean, dried up and brown. I just let them enjoy the winter, come spring till I'm in to the ground. But for now I just sip this coffee, it's the fog that is on the lake. I'm shouting my praise to the muse, just singing for singing sake. Singing for singing sake is the folk dancers on the lake. I try to live to give and I take. Singing for singing sake. I spend the afternoon raking leaves. Now there's not much else one could say. Not breaking the sweat with a little light work on a cool October day. And tonight we'll burn the brush. And of course, all the leaves. That smell take me back to childhood when everybody burned them on the streets. But for now, I'm just smiling away. Neither of which you can fake. And I'm soaking up the last bit of sunshine. Just singing. For singing sake, singing for singing sake, I am one with this break. I try to live to give and not take. Singing for singing sake. 
Changing night around the fire Same stories we hear all the time With the newest version Just a bit embarrassed And some juice in each new line I bet that's the way we like it Good story makes me like it And it helps to gently remind us What we've been free and simple did Well, it made us run like animals And from joy we never break Oh, from happiness or wonder We'd sing for singing sake Singing for singing sake God given right I can't shake I try to make a given I take Singing for singing sake Singing for singing sake God given right I can't shake I try to make a given I take Singing for singing sake Deidre Dejeer, DSM contributor, and I am delighted to be here tonight co-hosting the third DSM dinner party hosted by the Culinary Dream Team from Table 128, Lynn and Sarah Pritchard, and sponsored by our friends at Iowa Beef. Before we get started, I want to give a big shout out and a round of applause to our very, very talented and local musician, Ryan Dowdy. Thank you so much for bringing us in with just coolness and calmness, despite what's going on outside right now. He was playing while you were waiting. So we want to thank Ryan again. And we also want to give a thanks to Home Diddy, an in-home concert business who helped us find Ryan tonight. Thank you. Again, Ryan, joining me tonight are my co-hosts, Carl Walsh, also a DSM contributor, and the oh-so-amazing Susanna DeVaca, president and group publisher at VPC. Sarah and Lynn Pritchard from 128 are, is also joining us, along with Dan Hennerin from Iowa Beef Council. Hi to everyone. How are you doing? And hi to you all for joining us tonight for this. Susanna, we're at a dinner party. Hey, Deidre, we're very excited to have everybody here. Thanks everyone for joining us. Awesome, you Carla, so you there? Yes, I am so excited to join you again tonight and after our sellout in like 24 hours. Unbelievable. So welcome to everybody joining from home. I am delighted to be back here with my dear friend Deirdre. We actually met long overdue for the first time in real life tonight. Mm -hmm. You're a delight, even better in real life. We had so much fun with our last CSM dinner party back in January hosted by the River Center. And it was a treat to talk with chefs Michael and Lisa Laval about how to make duck and all of their awesome cuisine that they do at all of their properties through the Port of Des Moines. And I'm especially jazzed about diving into this amazing meal from one of my favorite, favorite local gems, Table 128. I agree, Carla. I'm excited to dive into to tonight's program. So many of us know Table 128 from those amazing little treats, which I'm sure we'll talk about today. But I want to take a look at DSM's 2021 People Issue, which is a very, very special uh, annual publication. I think I've got mine over here, right here. Isn't it amazing, Carla? It's um, and, and so beautiful. <laughs> It's beautiful. And of course, uh, talk with Chef Lynn Pritchard. We'll be doing that today uh, from the Table 128 and, and really just dive into how fantastic this featured meal is. And as you may have noticed, the star of tonight's beautiful meal is the oh so amazing delicious cut of beef tenderloin. Being from Iowa, many recognize the importance that the beef industry has on our state's economy. Not only does the beef industry generate billions and billions of dollars economically, but it also, uh, you know, the animal agriculture continues to provide many jobs in our state. And thank you to our friends 
at Iowa Beef Council for sponsoring tonight's dinner and being a part of it. Dan, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Before we go to Dan, let's take a look and see why Iowa Beef is so amazing. Uh, and we're gonna see it featured on the dinner table. Nicely done, Beef. You've always been what's for dinner. And it's no wonder. While some have a good side, you have two. You're a solid choice for protein buffs. And you've even had a knife named in your honor. Yep, there are plenty of mouth-watering reasons why. When it comes to earning a spot at the dinner table, you've always made the cut. Beef, it's what's for dinner. Dan, it's good to see you. I know I grew up listening to that song and knowing that commercial. <laughs> I even reposted it on Facebook today. It's a fantastic jingle. It, uh, you know, consumers immediately recognize it and associate it with our product, you know, and uh, just uh, real quick on really what we do. It's all driven by a sense of stewardship, stewardship for the cattle, stewardship for the land. And it's great to be here tonight and enjoy that meal, that beef tenderloin, because that same sense of stewardship goes right over to table 128 and, and how they prepared that. And so I hope I hope everybody's enjoying that uh, fantastic cut of beef. So, um, I, I could tell you a little bit about myself and just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, please, um, and then, please do. Uh, I mean, because this is, you know, what's what's significant about the beef industry is that, you know, we've already talked about it. It's not just one man on an island by themselves. You know, this industry um, is built on the backs of our families in Iowa, and, and you're one of those individuals. And please tell us your story and help people understand how this beef came to be on their plates. Sure, you bet. Uh, uh, there, there's about 28,000 beef operations in the state of Iowa. I'm a cow-calf producer right on the edge of the metro, northeast Madison County. We'll have 130 cows that are going to calve here in a couple weeks. So we're gonna, they're going to be in nicer weather to do that, and that's uh, fantastic. The average cow-calf herd in the state of Iowa is about 40 head. Uh, uh, so the average producer would have about 40 head of cows that they're, that they're taking care of. Uh, during this cold weather, we're experiencing, you know, their nutrient requirements are a little higher. So we're meeting those. Uh, we're trying to provide them a spot out of the wind if, if the wind really takes off and starts blowing, a chance to lay down on something other than snow. And, uh, and keep a, a good supply of uh, fresh water in front of them. Um, uh, and uh, in the, you know, here in a couple of weeks when we start calving, that's kind of my favorite time of the year. Cows are excellent mothers. And so it's uh, great to see those calves take off and grow. What we strive for is that those cattle never have a bad day, that, mm -hmm. that, uh, that, that we're meeding and taking care of them uh, mm -hmm. all the way through the summer and then, great part about cattle production and, and a chance that we get to all celebrate tonight is that uh, in Madison County, the topography is a little more rolling. And so what cattle help us do on the farm is they help us keep those sensitive areas uh, seeded down. So there's, there's vegetation on them year round. Cattle, we, maybe we ourselves can't make use of that grass, but the cattle sure can. And what mm -hmm. they uh, do is graze those hills and upcycle that into just an amazing source of protein. I, I, yeah. I think it's an amazing protein you can find any place, Deidre. So. Yeah, so I know a lot of folks were wondering, the cattle are okay with this winter right now. They're yep. good. Yep. All right, yep. that's good to know. Yep, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, 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 they're all uh, uh, well taken care of. And um, like I say, in this colder temperature, they do have a higher nutrient requirement. So we've upped the feed available to them, the frequency that we're putting feed out there. And then also making sure that they've got uh, a good bedding and, and everything to, to lie on and, and, and be comfortable. So. All right. Well, thank you, Dan, again for your contributions and thank you for your sponsorship. We're going to go on over to Carla now to introduce our next guest. Dan, that was fascinating. I do a lot of writing about nutrition, and I know that beef actually is one of the best sources of bioavailable vitamin B12. So if anybody needs a good protein and B12 in a very delicious source. Get yourself some beef. So beef helps also grow our state's economy as we've learned and from farm to table it plays an important role in our diets. So hence the star of tonight's meal, beef tenderloin. 
So talking about that meal, I'm delighted to introduce my friend, Lynn Pritchard, who with his wife, Sarah, and their team at Table 128 created our meal tonight. So welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining us. Well, thank you, Carla and Deirdre and everybody else involved. Can you tell us a little bit about Table 128, where you're sitting right now? And I'm hopeful that people have all dined there uh, pre-pandemic or during the pandemic. You guys have very safe dining space open for service. You're doing meal kits. Tell us more. Well, thank you for the question. Uh, kind of a lot of ground to cover uh, very quickly. Uh, we opened in May of 2013, and kind of the, the premise behind the food was to create a warm and comfortable environment, very reminiscent and paralleling that uh, of your home, uh, with food that kind of reflected my having grown up on a beef farm in Western Illinois. Uh, and I kind of called it and coined kind of sexy comfort food. And it's kind of evolved and moved on from there uh, as we've grown and, and evolved and palates have changed and people are, are getting more excited about, you know, broadening their palates and learning more about cuisine and, and finding out more about, and I appreciate so much Dan's use of the word sustainability and uh, land stewardship. Those are all things that are very central and very core to my belief of what food should represent and, uh, you know, nourishing the soil to nourish the food and the animals that are grown on that soil. So very, very important things. And yes, we are very excited about uh, the meal kits and our con constantly changing menu and kind of emerging differently uh, from the pandemic and you know, just so many things going on. Yeah, I think that your chef's tasting menus are like a hidden gem. Maybe they're not so hidden, but the Friday and Saturday tasting menus, it seems like you've been touring the globe with those, like lots of innovation on the weekend and throughout the week at Table 128. It has really changed a lot. The nucleus of this or the genesis of this was actually about five gentlemen who had kind of formed their own supper club. And they approached me about doing this tasting menu and they only gave me two restrictions and it was two things that everybody in the group wouldn't eat. So it started there and I thought, well, this was kind of fun and I've done a lot of them in the past, pre-Table 128. Uh, so it has kind of taken on its, its own life and uh, it, it's, it's three courses. It's not this you know hours, hours long meal, but they're very fun. We've never replicated a dish. We've never replicated a course. Um, it's been tremendously rewarding for us internally to be able to stretch our, our culinary wings and try many different things from around the world and different cuisines and different ingredients and, and really kind of, again, not open eyes, but continue to broaden that scope of perception of cuisine and not just for the Midwest, but for the globe as a whole. So uh, speaking of unique, we want to hear, Lynn, about this unique menu that you created for us tonight. What are we going to put our mouths on and just oh. engulf the goodness? <laughs> um, if you've dined with us long enough, you've probably realized that I really kind of like these tongue-in-cheek plays on on old traditions with a new ingredient or a different cooking technique. So tonight's first course is peas and carrots, kind of this ubiquitous um, thing from almost everybody's childhood, things that you might not necessarily like or enjoy when you're thinking about those experiences, but all of a sudden it has this new twist with a really kind of smoky chocolatey mole and a tarragon uh, infused creme fraiche. The carrot top pesto, of course, I don't, as a chef, I don't want to waste anything. So that became one of the sauces as well as the garnishes. So the roasted heirloom carrots, uh, the sugar snaps and snow peas, uh, just, you know, kind of a new twist on a very, very old Americana classic. Uh, moving on to the beef tenderloin, uh, Romanesco cauliflower. Uh, again, kind of one of those newer uh, to the market vegetables, it's cruciferous, it's incredibly nutrient dense. Uh, the English walnuts kind of giving a little bit of a floral uh, palette on the entire plate. Uh, the red wine demi, um, you know, I, I've been quoted as having said before that uh, 
in, in heaven, there will be no gravy. It's only demi glass. Um, it, it's rich and it's pure and it's made from an, a, a three day long reduction of roasted veal bones and aromatics. And of course, the star of the, the show on the on the entree course is the beef tenderloin. Um, it's certainly one of the more elegant cuts uh, from the steer and it's, it's wonderful. It's it's this umami and beefy. And just, Words just can't describe it, sir. <laughs> <laughs> just, just wonderful richness. Um, and then to end things, uh, obviously we're approaching the Valentine's weekend. So chocolate pot creme, cardamom caramel, chantilly, and a macaroon. You know, perfect way to end the meal. Sweet, but not too sweet. Uh, a little bit of texture, uh, something unexpected with the cardamom caramel should be a great amount of fun. And I hope that everybody's enjoying it at home. Awesome. Well, thank you, Lynn. Thank you, Sarah. I am so excited for this meal. And I want to thank you for preparing uh, nearly 75 meals for our guests tonight. It was a sellout. Uh, the process was smooth at your restaurant. It was easy. Um, and I know that this year has been full of adjustments, but we're, we're just proud that we were able to share this experience with you all tonight. And, and we're just grateful for you to share your art with us. We really appreciate it. Next, I would like to introduce Susanna DeBaca, president and group publisher of Business Publications Corporation. Uh, she will tell us a little bit more about this really amazing issue that so many have been waiting for, the 2021 DSM people issue. Hello, Susanna. I'm on mute, sorry, the most often said phrase of the year, um, but thrilled to see all of you here. Thank you so much, Dan and Iowa Beef, and thank you, Lynn and Sarah. And I wanna make one correction, Lynn, you said the perfect way to end the meal was with the pot de creme, but I believe when I got home, that's actually how my husband started the meal and he's working his way backwards. So, you know, I think it's, it's kind of an interpretive dance how you choose to, to structure the meal. Uh, but I want to um, welcome you all here um, to join the fun, not just in our dinner party, but the unveiling of our people issue. Um, our, our people issue is really a unique um, issue that we do. It's not a normal DSM magazine. It's, it's a special publication that we do once a year. We just started this last year and the people issue highlights some of our communities, industry leaders, art leaders, people from healthcare, you name it, but people who are the faces of their company and many faces of Des Moines. It's a gorgeous magazine. It showcases so many wonderful people who are making a difference in our community. Um, and I think um, we wanna show you a little preview of um, the magazine. Look carefully, cause you'll probably see some familiar faces. They might be your own. They might be some of the people who are involved in the party. So um, we'd love to show you this little video.
Hopefully you saw a couple of uh, friends. And I, I loved the quote from uh, Iowa Beef saying, we work to ensure the cattle never have a bad day. So that's, that's just wonderful. Um, we're thrilled that we can share this second issue, issue of our people issue with you. If you picked up your meal at table 128, you should have snagged a copy, but if you didn't pick up the meal and you were just watching um, and watching as a guest, um, you can um, find this magazine at a number of locations around town. So we're actually gonna put uh, a link in the chat to all of our distribution sites. And you can also find the list of where to get um, this magazine on our DSM website. Thank you so much, Susanna. I can't wait to dive more into this issue. I grabbed it with my dinner and it's so beautiful just flipping through it at first glance and I can't wait to dive in more. Among those familiar faces that we saw in this issue, of course, is Dan Hanrahan of Iowa Beef, as well as Lynn and Sarah Pritchard of Table 128, who created tonight's featured menu with their talented team. So speaking of that menu, which I hope that you guys are diving into if you haven't started yet, let's take a look at how that first course came together. I love to do kind of tongue-in-cheek plays on pieces of nostalgia from your past and you know like you said you know peas and carrots is kind of one of those timeless ubiquitous things but nobody thinks of it with heirloom carrots and snow peas and pestos and moles. Peas and carrots are one of my favorite uh, combinations of vegetables to, to put together. Uh, root vegetables uh, I, I think pair particularly well with pestos and moles, some richer darker flavors so to kind of juxtapose that, we chose the peas uh, to accompany, and it's it's bright, it's light, there's richness and crispness, but it's not too dense, um, and it's a perfect way to start the meal. Oh my goodness, a fun twist on traditional peas and carrots. Every time I hear peas and carrots, I can't help but just think about Forrest Gump. I just can't help it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I thought. Susanna, what would you think? Well, I was really um, thrilled to see that you were using mole um, as a Latina. That's a, a flavor that we use in very different kinds of dishes than peas and carrots. So that was tremendous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so different from my mom's peas and carrots. Sorry, mom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Do you have a favorite of the three sauces? I just, I'm a sauce girl, so I'm, I'm, I'm the type of person, give me all the sauces so I can taste all the flavors. <laughs> I'm with you. I'm with you. Put them all on. I'm not one of these people that doesn't need my food touching, you know? <laughs> That's like the impossible question for anything at Table 120, which is your favorite? Just all of it. All yeah. of it. <laughs> <laughs> yes, right? Going down. Well, um, now for Entree, the star of the show, the petite, Tenderloin, let's take a look at Chef Lynn and how he blew this out of the park in creating this beautiful piece of meat. We're close to Valentine's Day for this dinner, so I wanted to do something that's a little bit more elegant and special occasion-y. It's Iowa, so beef is certainly king. Um, and anytime we have a chance to showcase uh, beef, and certainly beef tenderloin, we take advantage of that. Uh, seared beef tenderloin, uh, and kind of the crazy looking, almost uh, alien looking vegetable is called Romanesco cauliflower. Uh, it's kind of this prickly uh, faced uh, cruciferous vegetable, but it tastes identical to cauliflower. Uh, paired with kind of the roasted and toasted English walnuts, again, kind of bringing out that floralness kind of brightening and elevating uh, the, the flavor profiles as well. Uh, the red wine demi and uh, the potato puree. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Susanna, a lot of folks don't know that you and I have a beef connection. <laughs> I want you to share with these folks what your connection to beef is, because a lot of people don't know. Breaking um, news right here on DSM. 
Breaking news. Yes, I, I grew up on a cattle farm here in Iowa. So when Dan was talking about, you know, cow calf operations, I know all of that. We actually had a breeding operation. So that's probably that's for a different dinner party. Um, but my dad swore by black Angus beef. So I don't know exactly what we're eating, but he 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 would swear you could tell the difference between black Angus and other breeds of meat. So that may be mm -hmm. too farm to table for some of our viewers, but I'm sure <laughs> they can handle that. <laughs> well, a lot of folks don't know there's tons of breeds of cows and there are some that have a little bit more fat and marble than others. And yeah, but yeah, there's definitely a distinction uh, between the breeds, but Do you a know lot of folks didn't know you knew that. Tell us what? more about your connection to the cow. <laughs> Mine is like eating ground beef from the freezer for dinner every day when I was a kid. Well, well you know, Marvin and I, a few years ago, um, decided that we were going to purchase our first head of cattle. Um, oh, wow. And yeah, yeah. And it, this is uh, what his family does for a living. And so uh, we decided to, to try it out ourselves and we love it. We love it. Um, you know, the cows all different. They have their own personalities, uh, but they also have their own purpose um, for in life. And so we, we just uh, really value just all aspects of agriculture in general, but that's just one that uh, we felt compelled to connect with. That's incredible. One mm -hmm. of the things I, I, I hope- And I ours are limousine in Angus. Okay. <laughs> I know limousine. We had those, some of those early in my life, right? But I, I hope that Iowans truly appreciate that we are incredibly lucky to have the quality of beef that we do. Um, I was jokingly talking to Dan Hanrahan um, when we rehearsed, and I've lived in Dallas, which is, you know, they think they know their steak. I've lived in New York City, which thinks it's the culinary capital of the world, Minnesota, Fine, really wonderful dining. And, you know, we have, I think, better beef here in Iowa and certainly more affordable. We can compete with the big cities. And, you know, you can, you can get that from your local farmer. You can go get it at a locker. Um, I think it's something to be incredibly proud of, the quality of our, of our food that we produce mm -hmm. here in the state. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I was like getting my journalist cap on today and researching Iowa beef facts. And did you know that there are more cow and calves in the state of Iowa than there are people? I Funny. didn't know that. Yeah. I didn't know that. I know. Almost 4 million cows reside in Iowa. So we are outnumbered. That is how <laughs> prolific they are. Fascinating, right? We are like one of the top five producers of cows within the 50 states. So that is amazing. Fun dinner amazing. party facts to take to your good fun fact virtual dinner party. <laughs> yes, For when sure. I was in New York, I used to use the cattle breeding stories as my dinner party, but I can't impress anybody with that here because <laughs> most people have done that as well growing up on farms. In Ohio. <laughs> Too funny, too funny. But in addition to this amazing beef, we've also got an amazing dessert. And I know not only is dessert one of Susanna's husband's favorites, <laughs> but it's also one of your favorites, Carla. Oh my gosh. So any dessert at table 128, you can't not get. I am a sucker for those cookies and have been trying to recreate them at home since the first time that I tried them. Like Lynn and Sarah know that this is like a hardcore, like experimental game because they're just that good. They have the just right texture and slowly but surely I like try to pull out facts from the servers and like the hosts and Sarah and Lynn, I'm getting closer. But this dessert in particular is ridiculously decadent yet light at the same time. I don't know how he does it. It's magical. So let's take a look at the incredible flavor combinations used to create our featured dessert, the chocolate pot de creme. Yeah. A component of what we get to do that is so tremendously rewarding, uh, you know, being imaginative and inventive and creative and you know, always kind of trying to be innovative and pushing the envelope on cuisine. Uh, we literally talk about food
Oh no, we're not pausing on dessert. Did we did we lose it a minute? I think the station is killing me. <laughs> like the suspense is killing me. The suspense is killing. Me. Well, you know, it's in, in the middle of a snowstorm trying right. to stream video. So um, mm -hmm. I'll Trust tell you what. It was great. Do you want to try it again or should we just keep on going? I say we try it again. We got yeah. it. It looks like they're doing it. I think we could do the little, the little da 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 da. Okay. Adam Richman, there was a guy on the Today Show that like closed off the stream by like pressing on his AirPod. So there could be worse things. I promise. Like he totally <laughs> bailed from the interview and he, <laughs> they had to call him back. So we'll start the video over. Let's okay, here we go. Time. I think yes. we got it. Let's fingers crossed. of what we get to do that is so tremendously rewarding uh you know being imaginative and inventive and creative and you know always kind of trying to be innovative and pushing the envelope on cuisine uh we literally talk about food all of the time for the dessert of course we're close to valentine's day and what goes better with uh valentine's day than, than chocolate so i chose dark chocolate foot creme uh with a cardamom uh caramel uh, the tiramisu macaroon and uh, cocoa nibs. Again, something that's probably going to please everybody on this plate. Uh, it's incredibly rich, it's delightful, but not overly filling. Just a lot of fun and a great dessert. That a way to convince me to eat a dessert is delightful, but not incredibly filling. The guilt is gone already. <laughs> Well, you remember that that movie Jerry Maguire? And I'm, I'm for me, it's like I think you, he had me at Coco Nibs. Is that <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Please exactly. say no more. Uh -huh. <laughs> Table one twenty. They have me at dessert. Can, would you like to see the dessert menu? And she's like, yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. yes, that's a silly question. So they have a pastry chef in house joining Lynn and Sarah there that whips up new creations every week. So you can order online. It's super easy and seamless if you want to get to go. But they also have like awesome panels up in the dining room if you guys didn't make it there to pick up your meal tonight. Super safely spaced. Masks are still required. Everything's buttoned up, disinfected. Very they even have the dividers, Carla. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's so, so wonderful what like they've gone above and beyond. Mm -hmm. so you can feel safe dining there in person, but they also have to go and desserts are available in all of the ways, as is the full menu. Definitely don't sleep on the cheese board. One of my favorite cheese boards in town. Homemade jams and mustards every week. Best cheese selection, like top notch. So good. Mm -hmm. Well, we're just yeah. thrilled to see table 128 having such a a great following even during the pandemic. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the things that DSM that's been incredibly important to us is trying to figure out how we can support local restaurants and support local dining. Um, our editor-in-chief, Christine Riccelli, and the team does an amazing job of highlighting restaurants and Carla writing about food quite a bit for our uh, magazine. Um, what One of the things that makes a community vibrant is our culinary scene and so continue please everyone on the line to support these restaurants it, whether it's takeout whether it's dine-in we know there's no patio dining right now but we'll be back there again and and you know we we definitely want to do everything we can to make sure that we have great restaurants here 500 percent. and word on the street is that they're booked up for valentine's day but you might as well just keep the celebrations going and do the chef's tasting menu the next weekend or get a meal kit or go back and visit another day because table 120 is not to be missed. Of course, you get it tonight, so. <laughs> you know, it's one of my favorite restaurants to just go to and I feel like I'm escaping, right? I live on in Des Moines and so going to table 128 is a little bit of a hike, but when I'm there, um, I just feel right at home. It's peaceful. Uh, and and I'm I'm warmed by the food and, and just the atmosphere. It's a, one of the most superb atmospheres. So I, I don't doubt that they're they're sold out for Valentine's Day because that is a place to be. Um, not only on Valentine's Day but any day out of the week. Absolutely. And I don't know if you guys know, but Sarah is a level two som. 
That is why their wine selection is so like. Okay, help help people understand what that means for the folks that you know are, are cider drinkers. What what is that? <laughs> so she is a certified sommelier. She has passed two of the four tests. Like if you watch that movie on Netflix, Som, where they're like wine knowledge is like through the roof. Sarah is a level two out of the four. She knows her stuff when it comes to wine. So they've been ranked on like the wine enthusiast best of list several years running. Their wine list, their cellar is stacked. Her palate is ridiculous. So when she offers pairings, just do it. Like she knows she knows her stuff. But if we really want to sound good, Carla, what you're saying is we don't actually have to say sommelier. We just say som and we <laughs> sound like super smart. Is that, is that it? It works. So we've got, we've got short words for everything. <laughs> Level two som. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Too funny. Well, ladies, awesome. this has been phenomenal. So it much has. fun. Another stellar dinner party. I'm honored to join you both. So let's roll the slide with the subscription information because you guys don't want to miss what's coming up at DSM. Speaking of beef things, I just submitted a story to Christine Richelli, by the way, about a place where you can go get locally sourced meats, which will be coming at you in the May Dean issues. So you won't want to miss that. So subscribe to all of our free digital newsletters at dsmmagazine.com, DSM Weekly, DSM Weekend, DSM Wealth, and IA to give you the statewide perspective. And then make sure to visit our websites to view all of our publications online and then updates throughout the week about the news you need to know around the town and the state. And then while you have your pen handy, make sure you mark your calendars and watch for registrations to our upcoming dinner party series dates. They will be awesome. So reserve the date right now. You see them all there. Our locations are to be announced, but you won't want to miss it. Also, Susanna, the next big event on our DSM calendar is your first annual DSM Home Design Award celebration. So can you tell us more about that? Yes, if you guys love food, chances are you might actually appreciate design as well. And we are thrilled to be announcing our first ever Home Design Awards that's sponsored by Community State Bank with Spectrum Lighting, Gilchrist, Jewett, Warner Stellion, City of, and the City of Urbandale. I'm helping us sponsor this. It's on March 9th and it will be from 4 to 5.30. It's virtual kind of red carpet events. Um, and we have uh, finalists already announced in homes, uh, interiors, exteriors, and details. So some of the most amazing designers and builders in our area have submitted work. Um, and we'll see who the, the gold, silver, and bronze are at this event. Uh, but if you if you love design, if you appreciate uh, beautiful homes, you will not want to miss this. It'll be a fun show, and you you basically get an inside look at fantastic houses. And um, all of us at DSM Magazine um, were we were just so inspired and um, impressed with the the designers. But then we all decided that we really needed to remodel our entire homes because we were satisfied with nothing, you know. Um, I didn't know that I actually needed an outdoor pizza kitchen, but after, after seeing some of the entries, apparently I do. Uh, but there's more, I sound like my infomercial here. Um, if you show up to the event, there's actually some pretty amazing prizes from our sponsors. Um, Warner Stellion is um, giving away a $300 cookware set. Um, we'll have a $50 gift certificate from Spectrum Lighting and Community State Bank, who's our presenting sponsor, will have a $100 DoorDash gift card. So it'll be fun to watch. You'll be inspired and hopefully you can win some prizes. Registration is already open, so I hope everybody will um, look at their next DSM and then click on that link and make sure you sign up, have a little happy hour and drink, see some great design, win some prizes. Awesome, awesome. I am super, super excited for the HDA Awards, Susanna. I am one of those folks who late at night, I don't know if anybody watched 
SNL last weekend, but I'm I'm late at night looking on Zillow. That's that's just the thing for me right now. <laughs> but needless to say, I'm super excited about this opportunity to see these homes. Uh, we get a chance to see the best of the best in the industry uh, in these HDA awards, like Susanna said. Um, so we're looking forward to that. Thank you all for joining us to celebrate the unveiling of the second annual People publication. We also want to thank you again, Ryan Dowdy, for kicking everything off today and your tunes from uh, the Home Diddy. Thank you, Home Diddy, for your local support. Um, and thank you for supporting artists here. A huge thank you to our sponsor, Dan Hanrahan. Uh, thank you to the Iowa Beef Council. Um, and our hats goes off to our restaurant host, Lynn, and um, his wife, Sarah Pritchard, uh, and the culinary team there at Table 128. And as always, Carla, it's been so great to see you. And it was good to meet you for the first time when we were picking up our meals. How fun was that? Can we? Folks, we, we, we didn't know if we had met in person yet. That's, that's what kind of atmosphere we're in these days. I know, it's been a year, <laughs> but we're getting closer to the light at the end of the tunnel when we can have these dinner parties in real life again. And I am so excited. Yeah, I'm super, super excited as well. I also want to give a huge thank you and a virtual hug to Susanna. Thank you so much for joining us. And thanks for sharing just, you know, everything that you have to this publication, but more so than anything, thank you for sharing the news about you and beef. We really appreciate you. <laughs> Breaking here. <laughs> um, again, uh, if you did not get a chance to snag the magazine, make sure you do that. Um, and if you didn't get an opportunity to uh, taste this tasty meal today at Table 128, you can always call them and get an order for pickup. Uh, they also have meal kits, which are great options for folks who want to get engaged in the cooking process. Also, while supplies last, you can snag your issue of this publication um, and you can do that in any of the DSM participating partners. That list you can find on the website, dsmmagazine.com, dsmmagazine.com. Go to that website. That's where you can also subscribe as well. Um, but we'll see you soon at the Home Design Awards on March 9th. Until that time, Cheers to each and every one of you. Bundle up and find some joy tomorrow. <laughs>